Hello, you're watching the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at today's headlines. US holds talks with Venezuela amid energy crisis. Leader of South Africa, Zebelali Basim Jondolo, killed. Thousands of educators go on strike in the United States. And major fire sweeps Rohingya refugee camp. In our first story, Venezuela has released two prisoners of US citizenship in a show of potential shift in relations. Among them is Gustavo Cardenas, who was among six Citgo oil executives arrested on corruption charges in 2017. The release was announced on March 8, days after President Nicolas Maduro met with officials from the US. He later described the meeting as diplomatic, respectful, and cordial. Maduro added that conversations coordination and a positive agenda between the U.S. and the Bolivarian Republic would continue. He also announced the restoration of dialogue between the government and the Guaido-led right-wing opposition on March 7th. Talks were suspended in October 2021 after the illegal detention and extradition of diplomat Alex Saab to the United States. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki told reporters on Monday that the purpose of the trip was energy security and to find out the well-being of detained U.S. citizens. The U.S. has lost a key supplier of oil after imposing sweeping sanctions and banning imports of oil from Russia. Reuters has reported that officials are demanding that Venezuela supply oil directly to the U.S. as part of a deal to ease sanctions. The decline in Venezuela's oil revenues due to U.S. actions has had a devastating impact. They have caused a nutrition crisis, impacted essential services like hospitals and electricity and water supply. According to former UN Rapporteur Alfred Desaires, 100,000 people have died because of the impossibility of timely access to medicines. Venezuela has still been able to produce around 760,000 barrels of oil per day with the help of partners like Russia and China. We move on to South Africa, where a leader of militant shack dwellers movement, Abilali Basim Jondolo, was killed on March 8th. 29-year-old Ayanda Angila was the deputy chairperson of the Ekhanana occupation. He had already been imprisoned twice and was out on bail when he was shot by gunmen on Tuesday. The movement's deputy president, George Bonono, has said that the eyewitness accounts identified the lead gunman as Kaya Ngobane. He is the son of local chief of the ruling African National Congress. Ngubane allegedly led three other men and shot Angila several times behind a Kenana communal poultry farm. A day before the killing, the movement had filed a case against Ngubane for an attack on the occupation on March 6. Bonono has said that the police have refused to act against the ANC. On Sunday, hundreds of ABM or Abilali members convened in Akhenana for their monthly general assembly. And Gubane led goons to attack the occupation and two Abilali leaders were reportedly attacked with an axe. Akhenana has established communal projects for self-sustainability and the Franz Fanon School for Political Education. It has survived repeated violent attacks, armed demolitions and arrests of its leaders on false charges. According to Abilali, there have been over 40 arrests of activists on trumped-up charges in recent months. In our next story, we go to the United States, where thousands of educators in the city of Minneapolis have gone on strike. The action has been organized by the Minneapolis Teachers Federation, or the MFT, and Education Support Professionals, or the ESP. They are demanding a wage increase from $24,000 to $35,000 for support staff. Other issues include smaller class sizes, mental health support for students, higher wages, and efforts to retain more teachers of color. Educators are also seeking better protections against COVID-19. On March 8, Minneapolis superintendent stated that teachers had amended their original demand for a 20-person raise. They are currently asking for 12% hike in the first year and a 5% in the second. The district has over 31,000 students 3,266 teachers and over 1,200 support staff. The superintendent has cited falling enrollment numbers, underfunding, and rising costs behind the current school situations. However, the unions have pointed to Minneapolis's $9.2 billion budget surplus projected last month. 
They have argued that the money and power have been concentrated at the top. Meanwhile, Minneapolis public schools are facing an estimated shortfall of $25 million. Picket lines were set up Tuesday on, and thousands of educators marched through Minneapolis. This is the first strike by Minneapolis educators in over 50 years. And for our final story, a massive fire swept through a Rohingya refugee camp in southeastern Bangladesh on March 8th. The blaze killed a six-year-old child and razed the homes of nearly 2,000 people. The blaze destroyed parts of Kutupalong camp in Koks Bazar, where nearly one million mostly Muslim Rohingyas reside. This is the sixth such fire to hit the refugee camp in this year alone. A fire in January had destroyed 1,200 shelters, leaving over 5,000 people homeless. According to Save the Children, 400 shelters were destroyed on Tuesday. Some families are staying with relatives in the camp area, while others have been displaced to nearby camps. The NGO has also warned that the fire could trigger distressing memories for children from the 2017 genocide in Myanmar. 73% of the children that the organization worked with refer to traumatic experiences during this time. Refugees have urged the fire-resistant materials be permitted inside the camp. There must also be additional openings in the fencing so people can escape in the event of an emergency. Rohingyas in Koks Bazar have been living in makeshift shelters made from materials like bamboo and tarpaulin. The Intersector Coordination Group daily incident reporting recorded over 150 fires in the camps in 2021. This was an increase of 180% as compared to the 84 fires seen in 2020. And that's all for today's episode. For more such stories, visit our website at www.peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you for watching.